Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zaratustra and I'm broadcasting live from Los Angeles. The topic of today is <clears throat> I'm sorry, I forgot. I lost my train of thoughts uh, in that moment. Um, the topic of the day is the way out is scary. So let's begin with a 20 minute meditation. What we're going to do is just simply relax in your seats wherever you're at and turn your attention inwards and seek for the observer. Look for the one who is aware of what is going on, but take your attention off of what's happening. So you simply look inwards. Instead of paying your attention out, out in the world, including putting your attention on your thoughts or your emotions, you bring your attention inwards and you put your attention on that which is aware of everything the seeker, the observer, the witness within yourself. There is a presence inside you that is aware of everything and it's your own self. So you bring your attention to that one. And as you're turning your attention inwards, you go beyond your thoughts. Don't get engaged with your mind. Don't try to stop your mind. Don't pay any attention to it. Let your mind do its thing. Your mind is acting like a dog that's barking. Allow it to do whatever it does. Don't bother yourself. You can't force a dog to stop barking. So, but you bring your attention to the observer within yourself. And you go beyond the mind and you realize that you enter into a deep state of silence. So take a deep breath and go ahead and relax within yourself. As you're taking a deep breath and relaxing within yourself, just be grateful for these moments that we have together. Don't take this for granted. Don't take any of the moments of your life for granted, no matter what happens. Remember that everything is temporarily. Everything comes and goes. None of it is going to last. Whether it's the good times or bad times, it doesn't matter. They're all going to come and go. So if you're enjoying something, appreciate it for the moment. And even this gathering can one day end. So let's appreciate us being together and having these moments together and be present with it. Enjoy it for now. Don't postpone anything to any other time.
You're simply hanging out in this moment with your divine self, the presence. When you're quiet and you don't have an agenda, you're not trying to get anywhere. You're simply here and you're exercising your natural state of being. Your mind becomes quiet and the presence of the spirit reveals itself. If you're patient enough and not forcing anything, you can feel that an energy field begin to develop. You can feel you can feel a powerful presence. surrounding you and you can feel the love which is here. It's the love of God. You're just hanging out by yourself and you're not forcing anything. A forced meditation is of no value. It's meaningless.
Yeah, just enjoy these moments. Your mind may come and say, what are you doing? When is this going to be over? I'm bored. I want something else. Just don't pay attention to your mind. And don't try to stop your thoughts. It doesn't work. Simply stay in this place that you are the observer of your thoughts, but you're not engaged with them. Your attention is not on your thoughts. Your attention comes to yourself, the observer, the seer. The one that's aware. And then as you're just hanging out by yourself without really forcing anything, you slowly go into the zone.
So slowly, slowly come back. Come back here. Now you shift your attention from within you shift it to the other world so it's a shift of attention where the attention goes wherever the attention goes the energy flows so when you shift your attention and you take your attention inwards to the watcher, the seer, things get quiet. Now we're shifting the attention from the inner world to the outer world. So <clears throat> when I speak of other world, it was anything outside of yourself and anything within yourself that's moving. So your mind, your thoughts are moving, emotions are moving, so they're still outside of you because you can watch them. If you can watch them, if you can be aware of something coming and going, you're not that thing. You can't be that thing because that thing is coming and going and you're aware of it. So that's not you. It's false identity. If you make a motto of that which doesn't come and go is the only thing that is real, okay? That which doesn't come and go is the only thing that is real, then everything else that comes and goes is not real. Even your own body. It's coming and going. It's not here all the time. So it's not real. Of course, these are words. It's blah, blah, blah. But when you start bringing your attention to that part of you which, is do which doesn't come and go, it's always here. As you practice that, you begin to realize that the rest of the stuff they're not real. They lose their essence of being really solid. So, a shift takes place. So, regarding the, the topic of the day, the way out is scary. I like to um, tell you about a point a poem from one of my best friends who passed, uh, Ernie, my brother, who left his body in 2014. Uh, the way out is scary. First you get a gun, then you put two rivers together. But regardless, it's still scary. I heard this this poetry long time ago and I it took me 10 years before I understood it that what is the way out is scary first you get a gun then you put two rivers together but regardless it's still scary so it took me 10 years before I understood the meaning of it so anyway, I have in my uh, Lightning Notes of Zarathustra, page 108, I have my own version of the way out is scary. So I want to read this to you and then, then we'll get into this and I'll explain to you what I mean by the way out is scary because this is uh, related to all of us. All of us that we broke through then from the norm and we are brought in 
onto this spiritual path. And we're pulled to it very strongly. And at times, it's very confusing, especially there are different parts of this path that can drive you crazy. Uh, you may be walking through this tunnel and there are moments that you think there is no end to it. You don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. There are times that you get pulled on this path that you feel like you are not getting anywhere. You're going round and round. And you may, you may think like, oh, ignorance, ignorance is bliss. I wish I could go back and be like other people, the ordinary people, and be, enjoy what they enjoy. They go to a football game, they eat hot dog, they drink their beer, they're cheering at, uh, for the games. They are into media, the real um, stream, mainstream media. They, they're just ordinary people. And you think, God, God, I wish I could go back and be that, but it's too late, you can't go back. And you've been touched and kissed by Her Majesty. The Supreme Soul has come and kissed you on your lips. And now you're in love. And you're hooked. So God has taught you and you feel the presence. You're pulled on this path. You may not quite understand it. Some of you have been on this path for a long time. Some of you may be new. But you can't go back to your old days. And sometimes you wished you could, and you wish you can be blending with mainstream people and not know anything about what I'm talking about. And go back to the old days, but that's too late. You can't go back. There's no way back. So, and you can't stay where you're at. So there's only one way. You have to go forward. So we're going to uh, talk about this, and I'm going to explain more. Uh, we'll get, in, get into it in details. But I want to read this to you. So it's the title of this uh, is The Way Out is Scary. The Way Out is Scary. First, you must reach deep down to the core of your being before you can get a glimpse of your true self. As you go deeper and get closer, your mind will throw some tantrums. Your mind will do anything to make you believe that your mind is the real you. You must be extremely diligent and persistent to keep digging deeper no matter what. Your mind will throw distractions across your path. Old addictions, new emotions, and all kinds of different fears and excuses. Still, you have to keep digging. If you want out, if you want freedom, then you have to sacrifice a piece of yourself. You may have to kill a part of yourself. You do have to pay the price. That's the, the way. That's, that's why the way out is scary. The way out is scary because you have to jump off the cliff. And you have to let go of something. And that thing you're going to have to let go is the old you. It's, it's your ideas. It's the image of yourself. It's to walk into your fears. It's to go and face your darkness. 
and to walk towards the light naked where God sees you 100%. And that's scary because you get exposed. But that's the way. There's no other way. That's why they say the way out is scary. <clears throat> okay, where was I? Still, you have to keep digging. If you want out, if you want freedom, then you have to sacrifice a piece of yourself. You may have to kill a part of yourself. I'm sorry, I already read that. You do have to pay the price. That's why the way out is scary. That's why only a few can make it to the other side. That's why there are so many teachers and a few masters. Not many people are willing to pay the price and walk the distance. They settle for psychic powers, distance healing, or tarot card reading, and they think they have made it. Others may stop sooner and settle for a yoga training program or a trip to India and a few crystals in their backyard. But you have to go through your own darkest valleys and your own rolling hills of emotions to remain in devotion and be willing to confront your own false faces before you arrive at your true nature. Now, if you are really sincere, if you really want freedom, and if your heart is really pure, and you really want a way out to meet the real you, the illustrious you, and the divine presence within you, will give you the means and carry you through. You may call on the fairies and the angels and the cosmic knights of the round table to assist you. Existence will put a master onto your path to guide you beyond your mind, beyond the illusion of separation, and beyond the illusion of free will, so you can meet your true self and merge with Her Majesty, Lord God, so that you may realize and become the oneness that you already are. And yet, the way out is scary. So all of us who've been on this spiritual path have been experiencing and been receiving, having glimpses is and going through this duality within yourself that you're questioning your path, you're questioning where you're at, you're questioning your practice, which is very valid. And of course, you have to be questioning teachers and their practices to see if it's sincere and if it's genuine and see if you resonate with them and if they're, they're working for you or not. You always have to question it. It's very important. And check in with your own heart and see if this is right for you or not, if it resonates with you. And kind of not pay too much attention to what other people are saying, because that could be very deceiving, what other people are saying, or being blind in following someone because everybody else is following him. That doesn't mean anything. Papaji, my sat guru, always used to say, you don't measure the power of a master, of an enlightened being, by the number of their followers. That's not how you measure it. Sai Baba in uh, India, he had like a million followers always at his ashram. But that doesn't mean anything. So, 
Prabhuji had about 150 people around him. So that's not what you're going to use to measure that. You have to use your own heart. Pay attention to your own GPS and see what feels right, whether you resonate with it. Don't pay attention to what other people are doing. It doesn't matter what they're doing. Majority of people are blind and they're followers and they're like sheeps. They'll go where everybody else goes. That's not the way out. You have to find your own way. And you have to be like a lion. Where the lion goes, he cuts his own path. Lions don't follow anyone else's paths. They just walk their own path. And wherever they go, they create the new path. So you need to do the same thing. Follow your own heart, whatever your heart says. And you go that direction. You tune into this one because this is the one that tells you the truth. Okay? It's very important you tune in and you check in with your heart and do the right thing. What feels right for you? And not be afraid because you can make mistakes. And that's a part of that's a part of the deal. You have to make mistakes. Now the true way out is scary and it's frightening because when you're on this path and you're called home, so what happens is Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, the big kahuna, the creator of the world, that which resides in your heart. And you have to remember there is no separation between you and I and the creator of the world. Because your pulse, your heart, your breath is the breath of the Supreme Soul. Otherwise, you wouldn't be alive right now. If you're breathing, that means the Supreme Being is breathing through you and there is love. So when the Supreme, Her Majesty, God, shows Herself to you, you cannot go find God on your own. It doesn't work that way. God chooses to show Herself to you. You don't choose to see God. Even if you may feel like you did, it's not that way. God chooses to, to show Herself to you and gives you a taste of Herself. So sometimes, you have to understand, you are in this world and you have a curtain in front of you. You're in this curtain. It's like being in a compartment, a train compartment. And you're separated from all these other compartments by a curtain. So you can't see what's going on. And sometimes when you're ripe, you're ready. It's like your you're ripe fruit or your clothes. The curtain opens up. God opens up the curtain and shows her face to you. And she gives you a kiss. And from then on, you're impregnated by the love of God. You get pregnant. A seed is planted inside you. And God has impregnated you. So you don't have a choice from then on. This love begins to grow within you. And the love affair begins. You have no way out. You can't go back. You can't revert things. You can't say, I don't want to be into this anymore. It's finished. You don't have a choice anymore. Finito. Now, until you're completely consumed by the fire of God, they won't leave you alone. So when this happens, 
it's like you're pushing, it's like a caterpillar. The worm is there and it wants to push through and open up its wings. It wants to push through out of its shell. So the caterpillar is pushing from inside to break through. And something, some force from the outside is pulling. So it's the same thing happening here. It's you're in love and something is really pulling you. But in the meantime, you have barriers in front of you. It's your mind. Your thinking mind is blocking you. Your fear, your emotions come. You're afraid because the way out is scary. You're trying to break through and go out. Something's really pulling you very strongly, but you don't have the spiritual maturity yet to understand what is happening. So it's very frightening. You're really afraid of what's going on because a part of this fear is that you know that you are not in control. You're losing control. This thing is so strong and is pulling you and you're falling in love with God. Something is really calling you. You're not interested in other things. Everything else is boring you. It depends where you are, you are at your level of spirituality, but you start being dissatisfied with uh, different things. Like you used to go drinking with your friends. You kind of lost your interest in doing that. Or you used to get together with your friends and play cards or the worldly stuff. People sit together and talk about politics. You start losing your interest in the worldly stuff. And it could be very subtle and it could be very quick. It depends on who you are and where you're at. So sometimes it takes a lifetime. For those of you who are older and you've been on this path for a long time, so you've been brought to this place gradually and you're cooking. And on this way, a lot of things can happen. A lot of you may go through a lot of severe challenges in this life. So all kinds of things can happen to you, whether physically you go through challenges, whether you've been abused uh, sexually in your childhood, you've been abandoned, you've been beaten up, you've been raped, uh, you've been kicked out of your home, you had abusive parents, maybe in your earlier parts of your life. Um, all kinds of different things could have happened. I'm not saying necessarily that is always going to be bad stuff, but normally it's shock treatments because if good things keep happening to us, we fall asleep. But when this awakening part happens, the activation begin to happen. Normally it's shock, shock treatments. And what they do is they take you into isolation. A part of this path is that you get isolated. And this, in this isolation, you're forced to face yourself. And normally in this isolation, this, this taste starts to happen that you're not really happy with ordinary world anymore. Everything starts to become meaningless and you lose your taste for it. And you're craving for spiritual teachings. You're craving for spiritual um, friends, people who are on the same path. And even on a spiritual path, as you're maturing, you realize that there's a lot of bullshit on the surface. The spiritual path is the same thing as the business world and the world. 
there's different layers of it, especially today with the internet and having access to a lot of different teachings and teachers. So it's easy for anyone to set up a couple of cameras and start teaching on internet and having an audience. So there's a lot of bullshit there too that you need to weed through that bullshit. So even on the spiritual path that you enter into, that's still you're not safe. There's a lot of blah, blah, blah. So you gotta, you have to keep on track and you have to keep checking in with your heart whether you're happy with and you're resonating with what is being presented to you or not and not get deviated from your path and there's going to be times that what happens is a lot of people are going in this direction to whatever and you feel like oh okay maybe I should follow them because if I don't go with them I'm gonna be alone so you go, and you're not really into it but you kind of want to be with your group so you deviate and you go in that direction and normally it ends up you end up being uh, dissatisfied you come back so for a lot of us as we get closer to the goal to where we need to get to you're gonna be forced at different stretches of time it could be whatever six months five years I don't know it depends on the person there are times you're gonna be lonely you're gonna be alone and you're not gonna have any companionship in your own level who understands what's happening to you now we're lucky we can create this kind of communities or their spiritual centers or ashrams that we gather around the teacher and we find like-minded people and then they're open-hearted and you find some friends so but I'm just sharing with you that the way out is not necessarily easy. It is scary when especially working on yourself. If you're sincere and really working on yourself, you're going to have to look at your dark side and your shadows. And it can get very scary at times because there are these hidden parts of you that you haven't looked at them and very comfortably you push them aside and a lot of us can easily go into denial it's a very easy thing to do so you need to kind of check in with yourself and see where you're at not give yourself a break when it comes to that and keep pushing through and keep going forward and in this going forward whether you're walking on this path alone by yourself but it feels right or you have companions or teachers guides that you can refer to far out that would be wonderful but you have to walk it on your own and keep going forward and not stop so the way out is sometimes scary because the times you have to let go of a part of yourself whatever it is see where you have your hang-ups you're worried about your money you're worried about your health your youth, your body, your family, your partner, your pets, 
just see where you really get really frightened about. And you're going to have to let go of all of them. At the end of the day, when they call you home and you got to go home, you're going to have to let everything go. You can't carry any of them with you. So why not now that you have an opportunity to let them go inside? I'm not saying that you donate all of your money to some someone or an institution. You let it go inside yourself. Or you let go of your partner inside yourself. You let go of your children inside yourself. Whatever is really holding you on earth and keeping you attached and it creates fear of losing them, you're going to have to get over that within yourself. And a part of that is to always keep referring, always bringing your attention within yourself, always bringing your attention to here, inwards, to discover that which is always here, to discover the space which is here, to discover the presence. That's the presence of God. Her Majesty, the Supreme Being. And to encounter that, encountering this, and getting comfortable by being with the self. Getting comfortable by allowing yourself to let go of everything and getting comfortable with that which is always present, which is here. And then you begin to feed off of this because then you start to bond in this relationship between you and your divine self. And then this is where the wealth is. This is where the love keeps coming. Bringing your attention here. You bring your attention here. You're hanging out with this one. Because we, most of our lives, haven't spent any time here. Our attention is always on the other world. We've been conditioned that love is coming from the other world, utter world. Someone has to give you love. Someone has to give you attention. So you bring your attention this way to this one. Recognize this one here inside you. 
again, we've been taught from childhood to project the power of love and the being and the presence outside of ourselves. You're being taken to the church or mosque or synagogue or if you're into Hinduism, Buddhism, there's always something, some structure outside of yourself and there's a statue outside of yourself. So you bring your attention there. You always fall in love with someone outside of yourself. You always want confirmation and love and acceptance from someone else. So we've been conditioned to look for it somewhere else, which is false. It's not there. It can't fulfill you and it can't satisfy you permanently. It's short term. What you're looking for, and no one really taught us from childhood until we brought on this path, is that which you're looking for is already here. So we bring our attention here, here. When you sit by yourself and you're quiet and you're not engaged with your mind and you're not entertaining yourself with your emotions, so your attention is here, then a phenomena takes place because you brought your attention to Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, the love of God. You're bringing your attention to this one. And when you bring your attention to this one, so it's kind of for the first time, you're really paying attention to the real soulmate. And the connection starts to happen and you get blissed out. You enter into love. You start to feel the love. And it's easy for you to project it on your teacher. That's another trap. You have to be careful not to fall into this trap. People project this love that they experience when I'm doing my workshop or academy or satsang or retreat and we go to this place of extreme love and they're projecting it on me as if they are falling in love with me or as if I am giving them this love. And that's another trap you can fall into with whomever you're following, whomever is your teacher your future teacher, past teacher, I don't care. You're not falling in love with your teacher. If you have a true teacher, they're mirroring back to you, they're holding a mirror in your face to recognize who you really are, the love which is within yourself. You are falling in love with the Divine Self, you're falling in love with the Presence. The Presence which is here, the love which is here, and you are that. And some of you may not believe that, or may not grog, say, okay. And that's okay, it will come. But you are the source of this love. This love, its very source and its fountain is within yourself. It's always here. It's not anywhere else. Don't waste your time looking for it somewhere else. Fears are always going to arrive and appear on your way. Look at fear as a friend. Whenever you get really afraid of something, a 
something that scares you, look at it. Kind of check it out and dive into it. There is something for you to learn from it. Hi, Tanas. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah? So nice to see you today. I'm glad you made it. Nice to see you too. You have any questions for me today? Yeah, I was just wondering. Um, so let's say I have a teacher that's, you know, showing you that mirror that you fall in love with. And then all of a sudden, the mirror starts to become unclear and starts to like trigger some wounds in you. And then you start to see that, um, you start to feel that it's no longer um, showing to you what made you fall in love. And so you fall out of love and then it becomes unclear. So you have to leave in order to find yourself again. And then since you don't have that mirror anymore, then you lose yourself. Can you explain okay. Okay, so what is the question? You got me a little bit lost. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is like the only way I can you know, describe it. Okay, so that mirror is, uh, you know, like let's say you have a teacher and then that mirror is showing to you things within yourself that you fall in love with. And then um, it brings it out of you and then it like, it fills you up. Like you're receiving that light, right? right. And then you're, right. as you're receiving that light from the teachings, poetry, whatever. And then it's also like showing you things within yourself that you didn't know it was there and it's coming out and then you fall in love with that, which is in here. And then you're projecting that to the teacher, right? But then all of a sudden, like, it starts, the mirror starts becoming unclear because now all of a sudden there's some like unhealed wounds within you that you have been ignoring and those start to become like triggered. And then all of a sudden the, the mirror, it becomes unclear and then um, you're not, you fall out of love. And so you feel like you have to leave in order to find yourself again um, because you found right. yourself in, and then right. you get lost. Okay. So let, let's um, talk about this part is this whole thing that we believe that we fall in love with somebody is false, actually. You don't really fall in love with anyone in absolute reality. You always fall in love with yourself. What the other person does, and we're all doing it on daily basis for each other, is when you f start to have these feelings, I mean, I'm not saying that human attraction doesn't exist, so don't take me wrong, and I'm going to get into that too. But in absolute reality, you always fall in love with yourself. So the other person is just a mirror. You're looking at yourself when you meet someone. Let's say you, you meet this beautiful man, boy, whatever, and your heart's beating really fast and you're really feeling drawn towards them, whatever. I'm just using this as an example, okay? So it may not be your situation. I don't know, but I'm just using it as a simple example. And we're... Traditionally, we're conditioned to believe that we're falling in love with the meat, with this person, this body, this face or persona. But they're mirroring us and they're t pulling a trigger within ourselves. And that trigger, when it's being pulled, we begin to feel the presence of the being within ourselves to be revealed and we fall in love with the, with the divine self. But since we're conditioned to project it outside of ourselves, we think we fell in love with someone else. And then when that person leaves you, then we crash. We go through a heartbreak because we then think we, we fell out of love. 
and we lost love. But in reality, as you become more mature spirituality and you've become self-aware, you recognize and you get more established into the self, you begin to see that you really recognize the presence of love within yourself and the other person pulled the trigger for you. Now that's one part. The other part is yes, human attraction is very natural. It's a natural phenomena that happens. So we are packed animals and we like to have company. So there's nothing wrong with that either. But it's very, very important, which we're going to be talking about this at the uh, coming workshop this coming week. And that's a part, one part of our uh, workshop that I'm going to make this more clear and talk about it more about this deep conditioning, this belief system. It's an imprint that love is coming from the outside. It's an object which is not true. So the more you recognize the presence within yourself, the more you recognize that love is here and it's coming from your own self. You're the fountain, you're the source of this love. The more you recognize that within yourself, the less you're projecting it outside of yourself. And that starts to help you become free. Freedom from bondage. Waking up to this illusion that is not real. And it doesn't serve us. All it does, it brings suffering. It makes you suffer because you're in this dream illusion thing that that which you're looking for is somewhere else and you're always chasing to get it. And sometimes you get to it and as you want to hang on to it, but the more you kind of try to hang on to it, the more it starts to evaporate and disappears. So it always turns to disappointments at the end. Anybody else? My dear friend Suzanne? Okay. Hi, Suzanne. Do you have a question for me? No. Good. I, I'm more than happy to listen to you, and it's an interesting subject. And I'm looking forward to the workshop, but I don't have a question. Okay, good. Excuse me, one moment. I'm trying to get my Instagram going again. So, all right. Good. All right, we're live here too. Hi, Sharon. How are you? I'm good. I loved listening to this today. Thank you so much. Great. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, why is it so hard? Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh. It's hard because there's resistance. That's why it gets hard, because the acceptance is not there. Yeah. Surrender is not there. The more you surrender to it and you accept it, the less there is resistance. So that's why it gets hard, because of our expectations ideas of how things should be rather than surrendering 
totally to what is. Acceptance of what is. Whatever that is. That you become, comp you surrender to it completely. And you accept it for the way it is. Then you see the shift happens. All of a sudden, what seemed like to be impossible and difficult, it becomes very easy. So you need to look in there within yourself to see that. But Sharon, a lot of it has to do with spiritual conditioning too. Especially for those of us who've been on this path for a long time. You're going to have to let go of your ideas, whatever that is. Just get rid of whatever, your, whatever belief system that you have. Know that that is creating suffering. Get rid of them and start fresh. Walk into this thing as if you don't know anything. Whatever that is. Shamanism, crystals, healing, what, whatever that is, get rid of all of them. Be naked and innocent and don't know anything. Just sit at the presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, completely naked. Come to this work every day and say, I don't know anything. Because every single time that I thought that I got it, I got very humbled. I got my ass really kicked hard. I got my nose bloody by the boss. Not out of malice intention, but out of love. That you don't know anything. And the reason you don't know anything is because I am infinite. You're dealing with infinity. And the mind cannot understand. The mind wants to conceptualize this. We want to put it in a box. We want to create some kind of borders of how spirituality is, how it works. And then we go by that guideline. This is beyond all of it. And every time you get to a point that you think you figured it out, it just pulls the rug from under your feet. And consider yourself lucky when that happens because it's doing it out of love. Otherwise you can stay in ignorance. Hi, Leslie. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I was writing to, to you. Want, you wanted to say something? I do. I, I, I think I must finally say something because it's a glitch in the resonance of my experience with you that just adds an unnecessary challenge for me because I'm okay. um, in my own experience with that which is the infinite, the divine presence of mm. that which is beloved within us. Mm -hmm. And I experience it in every way that you describe it and, and have been encompassed. And then back in my own dark nights and, I, you know, I've, I have been on this path for a long time. Um, I don't assume I know because truthfully, the more you know, the more you realize you don't. But I really have difficulty every time you say Her Majesty because it suddenly okay. throws my mind back into, du wait a second, back into duality. And it feels to me much more beyond that and no more neutral than that. And it feels like you're projecting something onto that which is beyond being either he or she. Um, so I really have trouble with that. Okay. Um, I, I mean, it's not mine to 
ask you, can you just mute that a little bit? Just that one little kind of gender association with that which is beyond gender? Because um, it feels can, like- Can, can from, I do what? Can I do what? I didn't hear that part. It's very invasive of me to even ask this, but I was just wondering. <laughs> I wished inside you would sort of mute that gender association. Uh huh. Everything else you say, I'm like right. drawn in. And then as soon as you put that, I'm like sort of thrown back out. And okay. It's such an interruption for me. And I just needed to right. find express it because right. I am right. very much appreciative of everything that you are and share. Yeah, great. Well, thank you for sharing with me uh, your, your honest uh, opinion, observation, or what comes up for you. So let's take a look at this. So I say Her Majesty, and that pulls a trigger for you and it turns you off. Yep. So let's take a look at it. What, what is it? What are you associating it with? Where does your mind take you to? Um, it's not even, well, let me see. Well, partly because my own experience of that which you are referencing, and I have my own experience of it very intimately for a long period of time, um, is, doesn't feel like it's got a her on it. Um, so when you do that, it, it just, it just throws me away, it throws me back into du dualism about it. And it kind of throws me into sort of like this Indian association with, you know, the, the feminine principle, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and mm -hmm. all of that. So, and to me, that which I experience as the infinite. Okay. More neutral and beyond that. And yet it encompasses all of that. But that association feels on a, in a different level of where I'm drawn to go. Okay. So it kind right. of sort of is like a, a one of those road bumps. <laughs> right. I'm, like, I'm moving along and all of a sudden it's like, oh my God. Right. You know, it feels like du duality, um, it, it, like some kind of personal, intimate, associative, and it feels like a projection, quite honestly. Uh-huh, right. It doesn't feel like... Um, uh, so it's okay. It's all right. But I had to just say it. I would have said it privately, actually. I was thinking of erasing everything. I was just sort of bringing it up. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want to create any disturbance, but maybe I'm not the only one who has that. Yeah, you may not be the only one. I, I get it. I understand. I've had a lot of people ask me that in the past. Why are you calling her she? So why aren't you calling it he or whatever? Okay, so this is a good subject. Let's talk about it, okay? Thank you. So, A is that anytime you are talking and you have to, we're in third dimension, obviously, and the third dimension is the dimension of dualities. So, anything you say, the opposite is also equally true. So, if you say day, then there's night. You say white, there's black. You say man, there is a woman. So everything has its own opposite. When you're speaking, the moment you express something, the opposite of it is equally true. So in language of spirituality, no matter what you say, however you're saying it, the opposite part of it comes with it. Two. So it's impossible using language to refer to a fifth dimensional space, something that it's non-dual. So a oneness, the state of oneness, I'm using state, but that's not even the right word for it. So the moment you're using language, it does create duality. So then it can get wordy. So that's where the term mind fucking comes. So we can mind fuck by playing with words. Oh, well, you said this word, but this word, da 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 da.
the key, the point is that, and I understand, for you it pulls the trigger, and I get it. All right, this is my, the way I look at it. Sometimes I call it the grace. Sometimes I call it the, the grand spirit, the supreme soul, her majesty, Lord God. Their point of reference, you're referencing, referencing referencing to that which is eternal, that which is omnipresent, that which is always here and present. It's timeless. Before time came, before language was created, it was here. And after you and I are long gone, it's going to be here. When I refer to that, I use different words because different words for different people pulls the trigger. Some people resonate with God. Personally, I like God, the word God. That's my number one preference when I use the word. But these days, a lot of people, they get triggered by that word because they're referring to God as this dude that he's got long hair, beard, he's got a stick in his hand, and as soon as you say the word sex, he's going to beat you up with it. Because that's dirty. So that's kind of like a biblical character, or it's coming from religion, that associates things with guilt and shame, especially sexuality. So when we use the word God, because of our conditioning from childhood, from religious background, that we're already born and we're sinners, or whatever we do is we're dis which is related to anything sexual, and then we should be ashamed and we should go to hell or whatever. So our mind goes to this thing of good and bad and blah, blah, blah. But somehow I like the word God because when I say God, to, for me, I'm not associating with that dude up there who's here to punish me. So I had to learn using different words, the Supreme Spirit, Mother Earth, the Being, Supreme Soul, Her Majesty. I like Her Majesty. When I say Her Majesty, something triggers inside me. I feel a power. Now, if I'm to give God a gender, I would make God a woman, not a man. The reason for that in this planet Earth, life comes for human beings is coming from women. Women give birth. So, our source of creation of human beings is coming from a female entity. So that's why I refer to, to her as Her Majesty, the Supreme. So I give her the gender female rather than a male. But again, I understand it may trigger something inside you. Which is cool, you know? Different things trigger different things in different people. I get it. None of it is good or bad. It's just the way it is. But I really appreciate you sharing your honest uh, opinion with me. I'm neutral to it.
Hi, hi, Ali. Hi. Hi, how are you, brother? How, how are you doing today? Can you um, hear me? Yeah, I'm doing fine. N nice to have you back. It's nice to be back. Anything you want, you feel like sharing with me? Yeah, actually, it was a guy who, uh, uh, I know it, it doesn't have anything to do with this uh, suspect, but, like, uh, the last time I, ca uh, the, the, the last time I was in this uh, meeting as well, some guy texted me some racist stuff, and now <laughs> there's a other guy who's just spamming me with, go kill yourself, monkey, and all, all that, I, and right. I can, I can, uh, it was so frustrating, like, I tried to ignore him. Right. So, yeah. Uh, uh, I, like, I felt peace when I came to these meetings, but now I just, like, j just because of that, like, he judged me be uh, because how, how I look, I, I didn't want my camera on. Like, <laughs> if you can understand what I'm right. talking about. I, I do. I, my suggestion is, number one, I'm sorry this has happened, and there's, there's no excuse for this. You have to understand that there's the low vibration beings that they're very immature in their spiritual understanding, that they're really creating separation to color or religion or whatever and that's where they're at so yeah. i i have compassion for them for the way they are and of course they have long ways to go to awaken and what i would do when things like this happen i turn the poison to medicine so it gives me an opportunity because I also have a lot of lovers and haters. So, and that kind of comes with the job. When you sign up with this, with this and you put yourself out uh, in front of the public, some people are going to love you and some people are going to hate you. And I get all kinds of different messages. So what I've learned is that I use this, I turn the poison into medicine. Every time someone insult, insults me or they express their anger or hate or whatever, I simply look at it, I read it or whatever, and I don't, I use that as an opportunity to stay still and not react to it. I remain passive. Let them say whatever they want to say. So when you play, have you ever played ping pong? Yeah. Okay. So you can't, ping, you can't play ping pong by yourself. You need another person on the other side, right? Yeah, that's true. So, so let's say you and I are playing ping pong and you hit the ball towards me. Okay. And okay. I don't, I don't hit it back. What happens? Uh, well, I guess I win. I get a yeah, point. There, there, there is no game. So if I don't hit it back, there is no game. So you hit the ball towards me and then everything stops. Yeah. So when somebody dumps or projecting their stuff, their fear, their worries, their anger, there's sorrow. This is what it is. Yeah. They're projecting it on me. If I don't respond and I'm just passive to it, it just goes through. There is no, there is no story because I'm not reacting to it. Yeah, but, so, but you, like, uh, but ahead. like, 
uh, in the past, and I know what you're pointing at, and I, I pretty much understand what you're saying. But in the past, like I, I have, I have been dealing with this almost uh, uh, a lot in my life, and I just seem like cursed, you know. Like every time I go to a place, they're always some kind of a person. So, okay, of course they have their own own, own opinion, but like, I, like even here, like I, I try to ignore that guy. I don't know if he's a guy, but. He he's just spamming, and I, I like I I try to ignore him, but I feel like it it like it's uh, touching me, you know. And I feel like uh, everywhere I go, <laughs> there's always this fucking person who, uh, who 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 are just judgeful. Right. Yeah, I I understand. And this may even go on longer, but again, what, what my suggestion is to take it as an opportunity to practice staying still. To every time this happens, instead of thinking that it's somebody else is doing that, someone mean, someone hateful is doing this to you, think of it that it's coming from your sat guru is your guru is testing you. Can you practice staying still? Yeah. And no matter what they're telling you, you're just not reacting. So yeah. use the opportunity. Use the poison to, and turn it into medicine. Yeah, I will try. Thank you. Yeah, that's my, that's my suggestion. And try that for a couple of weeks and see what happens. Let, let me know about it yeah yes. okay your mind your emotions want to react to it but hold on to your horse and just stay still remind yourself that okay i promise Zarathustra that when this happens i'm going to bring my attention inwards and i'm going to i'm going to use this as a reminder to me to be still and silent and love myself yeah, I will try. Thank you. Yeah, try that and see what happens. Yeah. Okay, so we're coming to the end of our academy. It's almost 11.45. I'm really happy that we've been together today. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, just to remind you all that our free online Global Self-Awakening Workshop begins this coming Saturday at 9.30 a.m. California time. That's going to be 12.30 New York and um, 6.30 p.m. European time, 18.30. So we're going to have the workshop uh, Saturday 20th of June, 21st. 24th, 25th, and 27th and 28th of June, each day for two hours. We, for those of you who want to interact with me directly, then I recommend that you sign up through our website, through our system Zoom, so I can see you and I can interact with you. Those of you who are, are viewing this through Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, I can't interact with you. Uh, it's too many devices, uh, too many questions come up, and it's hard for me to, to deal with a lot of different devices. So for me, it's a lot easier, and that's the one that I interact with, which is the Zoom. So... Um, some of you have been writing to me through Facebook or Instagram. I'm sorry, I just can't respond to you. It's impossible. All right, there's another question here. I can feel fear when I came into contact with my greatness. Do you have any tips on what I can do to get over it? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Cecile. Let me, uh, if you want to bring your question to me on Saturday, at the workshop and I answer your question because we're running out of time. Um, next Wednesday we will not 
having the academy because we're going to have the workshop. Um, so, but we're still together. Feel free to uh, share the information with your loved ones, whomever you think that they can benefit from entering into the workshop. It's a free event. It's my gift to the community. So if you want to share the information with your uh, on your Facebook pages or Instagram or send our emails to your friends or family, feel free to do to do so. Uh, the more people they come in contact with this wisdom, uh, the more uh, chances we have for a transformation, a global transformation. If we could have enough number of people around the world to go into silence and find inner peace, inner stillness and silence, then that's going to change the faith of where this planet is going to. It will quiet the mind and as the mind gets quiet then the manifestation of the mind will change. So we'll see what happens but whatever happens keep in mind we're in very good hands. We're all in very good hands. This whole thing, everything that is happening right now is a big part of our awakening. And we've been waiting for this for a long time. It's forcing us to go inwards. It's forcing us to look within and to discover the true treasure that's within us, the true gem, the presence the love of God, the power that is here. A recognition of our true self. That we're truly beyond the physical limits. That we're truly omnipresent, that the true part of us, that which is eternal, it's always been here and it will always be here and is not affected by, by what comes and goes. And the more we come to this, across this information, this wisdom and this understanding the more we become free. And as you become free, your vibrations automatically affects your surrounding. So, there's no need for us to put our attention on the utter world and try to fix things in the world. What we need to fix is ourselves. What we need to, f to fix and recognize is the true source of love is here and we are that. Is the recognition of our own divinity, the recognition of the love which is here, which its power surpasses any power in the world. And that is here within yourself. And that requires you to stop, give up all of your ideas, and simply bring your attention to this place. And fall in love with the presence, which is here. And instantly transformation takes place. Instantly. 
I love you all. Thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Namaste.